With Fortnite Season 4 approaching any day now, I wanted to do a little bit of a review and actually see how bad was Fortnite Season 3 actually. Season 3 has been getting the rep of the worst Fortnite season of all time, literally since the day it has been released. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. We're trying to hit 100k by the end of the year. Use code KDOG on the Fortnite Adam Show if you want to support me even more, especially when buying the brand new Seasons Battle Pass. Without further ado though, let's get straight into today's video. All right, we got to start off at the very beginning of the season and and the thing that made people hate it the most was the cars. Now, cars were always a thing that were in Fortnite for like the longest time now. That was never the issue with it. It was the attachments that you were now able to put on the cars, which made it basically like you had to have a car if you wanted to be able to compete with anybody. It really took away the whole like real like Fortnite fun feeling. And it felt more like a, just a car simulator of just running into people and shooting off of a turret. I know for me, this was the first sign that I could tell Fortnite was going to be bad this season. Thankfully though, the cars were not in Fortnite competitive, but little did we know that would be the very least of our issues going forwards. Right away, the pros realized how broken the hammer fists actually were. Now the hammer fists were honestly an item that I felt like could have been like the catalyst of this whole season. I definitely feel like we would have called this like the hammer fist season instead of just like season three. I mean, the season really doesn't have any like memorable like items in it, but this item was just unbelievably broken. Everybody was carrying them. You were just getting hammered into to your box right away especially in the squad victory cups i remember the first one like people were literally like quadruple hammer fisting into a single player's box it was the most annoying thing to ever go against they ended up vaulting it literally like a couple weeks into the new season and a lot of people were like oh okay they're just gonna nerf it a little bit and then bring it back because that is like such a big part of the season but i mean as epic games always does once they end up vaulting something and competitive it just never came back the whole season so at this point people were really happy with epic games a lot of the pros realized that the hammer fists were just super broken and they weren't even really that fun to use and at this point is where we got something that would ruin literally like the next couple months of fortnite and that is when everybody realized how broken the nitro was now the nitro was another brand new item in the season and when players stopped using the hammer fist and started using the nitro in the hands of somebody that was actually good they were literally unkillable it was one of the least competitive things i think i have ever seen getting refreshes was so easy in endgame and literally anybody that had like no mats could just instantly pop a nitro run into your wall and your whole game was over i feel like it was one of the dumbest things that fortnite has ever added this was also around the time that we found out that so many eu players were going to be coming over to na for their very last chance to qualify for global championships we had a bunch of big names like tayson mongrel and mr savage you know to play with clicks and try to get him his first ever fncs win and so many other eu players Players. This ended up being by far the most stacked FNCS in Fortnite history, and I don't think we're ever going to see something like this happen again. All right, let's get into like some of the first real tournaments of the season now, and this was honestly the season of the rise of Batman Booga and Rapid. I remember after Batman Booga and Rapid won the very first Cash Cup, everyone was saying it was just because the meta was all dumb right now. A lot of the top name pros weren't qualifying because honestly, qualifying at the beginning of the season was just so random. This is also the first Cash Cup up that Peterbot didn't win in two and a half months, which is kind of crazy when you think about it because of the fact that he won six out of six cash cups last season. So finally seeing a new winner was pretty refreshing to a lot of people, but also no one really expected the new winners to be Batman, Booga, and Rapid. This was the first time that both of them were on zero ping. And this was honestly a statement of what was to come for the rest of the season for them. The very next cash cup, Peterbot and Poyo actually failed to qualify for. And this was the time that a lot of people were saying that Peterbot was was washed and he was carried by the grim gate coin this was also the time that clicks and vino were placing 20th and 22nd back to back in duo cash cup finals a lot of people were saying that this duo is just not meant to be this was around the time when vino was first starting to crash out on clicks and all of clicks audience honestly kind of hated vino this was also the first cash cup that tayson and yamzo won this is where they kind of started their consistent top five run throughout every single duo cash cup all season but then we finally got the nitro nerf 
nerf. Now the Nitro nerf honestly changed everything for competitive this season. It made it so the top teams, the most consistent teams could be able to qualify more consistently. And that honestly made a lot of the top teams go back to the top. This is when we saw teams like Clix and Vino win their very first cash cup, as well as Peterbot and Puyo finally getting back into that top three spot of cash cups. But look who was in second. We still had Batman, Booga, and Rapid showing why they are a team not to be messed with this season. Then it was finally FNCS qualifier time, and we were finally able to see the dominant performance and the real potential of Clix and Vino. They were able to win the very first FNCS weekly finals. And this is when people were really starting to pick Clix and Vino as the favorites to be able to win FNCS. Week one was also the week that Peterbot and Pollo failed to qualify for the finals rounds. And a lot of people were saying that this was just a one season wonder duo and they'll never be able to get back on top. Little did people know what was to come for them though. I think this is honestly the wake up performance that Peterbot and Pollo needed, especially after the whole Nitro nerf. The very next cash cup, they were able to win four out of the six games in the cash cup finals. And this is when people were really starting to finally get back on the Peterbot and Pollo bandwagon. And this is also when a lot of people started to call Redline Rig broken because all of the other medallions literally got nerfed into oblivion. But the only real medallion that wasn't even touched was theirs at Redline Rig. Then just shortly after that, they ended up winning the week two of FNCS weekly finals. And at this point, everyone was just fully back on Peterbot and Pollo. They became the like instant new favorite to win FNCS. Not like the unanimous favorites, there obviously was still a lot of people saying like Clix and Vino, and there was also a lot of Taysen and Iamso people. At this point, the one name that really wasn't getting mentioned at all was Acorn and Cold. Now, Acorn and Cold actually failed to even qualify for the week two finals. They were failing to qualify for basically most of the cash cups. They did have good performances in like two of them, but then they went on like a three week dry spell of just not qualifying for anything, placing like 9,000th in FNCS. And this is actually when they started in lower bracket for FNCS heat, which is something that just nobody really expected. It kind of just went to show on how like inconsistent this whole season was for competitive as well as for the casual audience. We are finally getting to the time of FNCS grand finals, but we have to talk about the very last cash cup before grand finals actually started. And a team that I really haven't mentioned at all this whole video, that was Mongol and Mr. Savage being able to finish third place in the final cash cup before grands this team looked absolutely insane in fncs heats they were playing so consistently to be able to secure their spot into grand finals and to a lot of people this team was like a lock to be able to place top 10 in grands everyone thought that the qual to global championship was just going to be so easy for them and then a day before grand finals disaster struck we got the news of the cactuses, which was the whole surge plan and basically the whole game plan for at least 20 teams in grand finals had been completely removed, basically. This completely ruined team strategies like Margul and Mr. Savage, Taste and Neonzo, Kanata and Cooper. And I mean, there's honestly nothing else you can do except for feel bad for those teams. Like their whole season of preparing and practicing literally got ruined and completely changed the day before the biggest tournament of the entire season season. All right, let's finally get into grand finals, the tournament that everybody was waiting all season for. And let me just say it did not disappoint. On day one, we got to see how good Clix and Vino actually are. They finished day one in first place and they were just absolutely dominating. We also saw teams like Acorn and Cold really struggle while they were triple contested. Mongol and Mr. Savage were also really struggling with the new changes. They just literally could not get surge at all. After day one, the leaderboard was Clix and Vino in first, Peter Bond Poyo in second, Baka and Pars in third, Bryce and Bolts in fourth, and then Buga and Aviv to round out the top five. This was the point where a lot of people finally started to really get the hope that this was finally going to be Clix's first FNCS win. Vino was playing absolutely out of his mind. He looked like the best player in the whole world on day one. But if you were watching Grand Finals, you know what was to come in day two. On day two, they were unfortunately getting griefed by players I will not mention, but they were doing things like breaking their vending machines, landing on them when they literally haven't landed there like all season and just overall ruining a lot of the momentum that they had going for them they were still in first place up until game nine but then in game 10 the inevitable eventually did happen and we began to see the dominance of peterbot and polio they were just starting to absolutely take over and like time and time again this chapter peterbot ended up on top winning the grand finals by almost 100 points proving why he is one of the best players in the entire world and another very 
surprising turn of events, there was only one EU player to be able to make the LAN event, and that was Vino playing with clicks. So we unfortunately didn't see Tayson and Yamzo, and Mongol and Mr. Savage just absolutely dudded this grand finals after being one of the favorites going into it. So what are my overall thoughts on Fortnite season three? Is this actually one of the worst seasons of all time, or are people just overreacting? I feel like it was determined on how you actually played or viewed Fortnite this season. If you were strictly playing pubs and casual wise, I think it was a very bad season. I think it was like a four or five out of 10. If you were playing tournaments and playing competitive, I would say it would have to be maybe a three out of 10. We had like three separate, completely game breaking things from the hammer fist to the nitro. I think the only real winners of the season and the only real positives were from the viewer perspective, watching FNCS and watching grand finals was absolutely insane. One of the best grand finals we've ever had. And also if you were just playing specifically the new reload mode they added this season, then I would say you are a winner as well. Reload is one of the most fun modes Fortnite has ever added. If I had to give it like an overall rating just in general, I think I would have to give it like a 6.5 out of 10. That might seem a little bit high for some of you guys, but I feel like the season would be a lot more dead if reload mode never came out. Let me know your guys' thoughts on this video overall in the comment section down below. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Remember, we're trying to hit 100k by the end of the year. Use code KDOG in the Fortnite item shop if you want to support me even more. Thank God for another day, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.